Nicole here with Miss Malie. We're going to be working on heel today. We're going to do an intro for that. And uh, since she's a little bit more tired, this is a great time to work on that. And of course, uh, whenever you walk, you want to make sure that your dog isn't pulling you down the street. If she sees something, you want to make sure that she stays by your side at all times. And of course, I know she's still a puppy. And puppies are always growing and changing, and sometimes there are hiccups in training sessions, plateaus, things like that. So don't get discouraged if even now or further down the line uh, you feel like her training has plateaued. Just continue working with her, and she's already a really, really good girl with her commands and everything. So the healing is just icing on the cake here. And as you can see, I don't have her uh, gentle leader or that halty har uh, harness thing on her face. Um, this being is that I just want to make sure that she gets comfortable knowing that, you know, whenever we go out, we can just slip a leash on and we don't have to go through the whole process of putting that on. I do understand why you put it on is because she's a big girl and she's very strong. And uh, if she wants to go somewhere, she's going to go. So instead, all I have here is the leash and I have a, a leather leash here and I twisted or turned it um, inside out basically I looped it through the handle so um, it has a little um, I guess like a little loop around the very top part of her neck and uh, this being because I want to make sure that I can have complete control over her at all times and not just pull her face towards me when I need her to either uh, if I have to correct her or bring her back to me so making sure that it, the leash is located right at the very top of the head, directly behind the ears is the best place for it to be, and you're able to use a minimal amount of effort in correcting her. And uh, since she is very strong, and you know, just like I said, if she wants to go somewhere, she's gonna go, I do have treats with me. And this being because I'm not her owner, and I, I know she likes me, and I like her a lot too, but the bond with her and you is a lot different than ours. So maybe she's motivated by affection with you, but she loves a good treat or two uh, with me, and this will definitely uh, help us with the healing here. Yes. Good girl. All right, so when we are asking our dog to heal, it's basically a moving command. So we want to make sure that they're at our side. Usually they're walking on the left-hand side, and then when we start moving, we're gonna slap our leg, and ask her to heal. So we're just gonna slap and say, heal and start walking. And when she does heal with us, that doesn't mean to just heal and then come to a stop. It's going to be stay by my side. You need to stay right with me, not in front or behind. And when she does get a little far in front, we can use a, a correction with our voice, like a uh-uh, or something like that, a no. You want to make sure that it doesn't sound very pleasant. So she understands that that's not a behavior that you want. Yes. All right, and also when she does start uh, pulling, for example, if this starts sliding down a little bit, she's starting to get a little bit ahead of you. It's sliding down, so she has that uh, harness effect with it. Just turn around the opposite direction and start walking. She's going to have no choice but to go with you. All right. I'm just going to do a little bit of healing with her, and when she does successfully heal, I'll be giving her a treat, which I know she loves because she just had one just a second ago. Had to make sure that she approved of them. When she starts lagging behind a little bit, I use that treat, that food motivation, right in front of her, it's kind of bring her to me, um, right at that position that I want her to be at, right at my side. And when she's there, she goes to a sit when we stop, and then she can be treated. 
and when she is walking nice, I want to make sure I cut a lot of slack on the leash. The last thing we want is a lot of tension because dogs can definitely feel that. And when they know that you're tense, they start to get tense as well. Alright, so she discovered my bag of food. Okay, so I'm going to continue healing now. Good girl. Good girl. Good sit. Good sit. Good girl. All right. Very good. And uh, when you do have her uh, progressing with the healing, she's getting it. She's staying by your side. At that point in time, you want to use markers. So when you notice a behavior that she's doing that you appreciate, something that you want her to continue doing, such as walking right by your side, healing, you're going to say yes or good in a really excited tone of voice and so she's going to know at that point in time she did something that you wanted her to do. Alright, so she's laying down right now. We're going to get right back up and start again. Yep. Yep. Alright, so she doesn't want to get up right now so I'm going to use my treats and motivate her to get up. Yep. Yep. There we go.
she always stays on the same side every single time. Sit. Like I said before, different environments are going to have a different outcome on the healing. So work on it slowly. Practice it in the house first. Graduate to the yard. Go out on a little bit of a little walk down the street or something, and then slowly get her out into uh, different scenarios, even like Petco or something where she's around other animals, people. Um, perhaps early in the morning when there aren't too many people there, and a limited amount of distractions, and work on it from there. Yes, yes. But she did so good. I'm so proud of her. Good girl. And we'll definitely continue working on this later. I know she's only with us for a couple of days, which is sad. <laughs> Wish she could stay a lot longer. Good girl. Well, this has been Nicole here with Miss Malie, and we've been working on a heel intro. We'll see you later. Bye. You good girl.